I um, wanted the last couple and haven't gotten them. If you just got here, hello everybody. I'm turning you to mute, we'll get started. Make sure you have your chair or um, something to sit on block to put your legs over on and uh, your block and your strap. Take a moment to just feel your feet on the floor. Do your first check-in. Where's the weight? Go ahead and close your eyes. Notice where the weight is between the front and the back of your feet. The inside or the outside of your feet. And then take a couple deep breaths. Feel the breath move into your rib cage, making your ribs move in that east-west direction. Expanding out to the side. And then with your feet, outer edges of your feet pointed straight ahead. Let's start with shoulder shrugs today. A little bit of a gentle squeeze between your shoulder blades, slide them up towards your ears and push them down. Open up that space in your upper back. For those of you that tend to be a little bit rounded, this will just turn on some of those muscles that lift and lower the shoulder blade and affect the upper back. Letting the ribs slide all the way over, or the shoulder blades slide over the rib cage. And then shoulder rolls up and forward and around. 10 times strong elbows. Backwards. And once more forward, up and forward and around. And up and back and around. Bring your hands, fold them into the golfer's grip, palms open, fingers curled, bring them right to your temples, elbows all the way together so they touch. Take a deep breath. Full breath in, open up the space in your rib cage. Feel the rounding in your upper back. And then open them up. Elbows together and back.
and release. Arms out to the side, right into a windmill. Exhale over to one side. Working on any rotation that might exist in your body. Any difference in the side body or right to left. Over and up. Bring get rid of a few shadows. Take your feet wider. As we abduct the legs, it's more challenging for the body to have misalignments in the pelvis or up through the spine. So this is addressing, again, rotation, any bit of scoliosis that might exist. Big breath, over and up. Wider once again. And hug your legs in towards each other. Up and over. And then back in. Last position, outer edges of the feet pointed straight again. Arms out to the sides. Over, take a full breath when, you, when you're over on that side. Pull down toward the floor, lift this side of your rib cage up to the ceiling and come up and over. Rib cage lifting, breathing, opening that space. And then right into arm circles, hold your fingers to your palms, arms down by your sides. Get really tall, but a little bit of a squeeze between your shoulder blades, bring your arms out to the side. So we're after that little bit of thoracic extension, relax your belly. Take a breath and just feel what it's like to let your belly go. Now that shouldn't make your pelvis fall forward. You should have enough support from the rest of your body that as you relax the belly, the back of the belly balance itself. So just because you relax your belly doesn't mean your pelvis gets to come way out of alignment. But see if you can relax your belly and then arm circles, pinching the shoulder blade, circle forward, 40 circles. Keep going. And backwards. Strong elbows. Squeeze. Backwards, 40 circles. down onto your back, feet on the floor, knees bent. With your arms abducted, so part way out from your body, 30 degrees or so away from your body, let your arms relax out to the sides, bring them back in, touch your belly. As you do that, notice if your shoulder blades 
are lying flat on your back. Letting them go out, bringing them back in. Out and in. Full rotation in the arm bone. As you're able to scoot the shoulder blade underneath you a little bit more, think collarbones wide. All the way out, all the way in. Then go to your hands. Imagine you have those rubber bands around your fingers in that um, pointed arrow hand position. And then press your fingers all the way as wide as you possibly can. Open them up and then bring them back in. Spread them wide. <sighs> and notice if you have a shoulder that's less stable, we're working all the way from the fingers into the shoulder. It may feel like, well, the arm bone doesn't want to stay in the right place or do what you can to see if you can create stability. And then go to the golfer's grip, fingers curl, and go to your wrists. And just move the wrists around. See if you can find some new space at all different angles. And then bring your arms up so that they're at 90 degrees. Squeeze and release your shoulder blades underneath your back, in toward your spine. Squeeze, release. Go right into pullovers, interlace your fingers, reach your arms up, pull your arms over your head to the floor, and back up. You keep going, I'll be right back. Hands together or separated, getting that thoracic extension, letting the spine move all the way down to the low back, low back held in a neutral position right now. Arms out to the side, shoulders tucked underneath you, up on your toes, back on your heels. Walking up on your toes, back on your heels. Getting your feet to work. If you have hammer toes or any kind of misalignment in your toes, really lift the toes to the sky as you pull your toes up. And when you go down, really point into the floor arch across your toes, working arch, arches on the inside and the outsides of your feet. Feel the muscles along the side of your shin sliding and gliding over each other.
and then release out of that. Give it a little break. Do one more set of 20. Up on your toes, back on your heels. Get them nice and tired. And then put the bottom of your feet together. Allow your knees to drop out to the side into a frog. Put your hands on your belly and just feel your belly rise and fall fully in, fully out. Deep breaths. This is femur driven lumbar extension. So as your legs drop out, it's pulling a little bit of an arch into your back. Hang out there, breathe. And then bring your legs in, grab your block, and place it between your knees. With your arms out to the side, squeeze and release your block. Find the muscles on the inside of your legs. Again, pelvis held at neutral. That should feel like hip bone and pubic bone level. Shoulders gently tucked underneath you, arms out to the side. Squeeze and release. Few more, squeeze, find those inside leg muscles, release, squeeze, release. All right, take your block away, grab your chair or your block, bring it in so that you can put your legs up on it. into static back. So bringing this angle up to 90 degrees takes your pelvis and drops it back slightly. So you're more like going in towards your squat. At some point your pelvis will tip backwards. Arms out to the side. And now bring your knees in towards your chest. Your back is going to go even more flat to the floor as you do that. And then stretch your heels up to the sky. Pull your toes down, tighten your thigh muscles, release and drop it back down. Bring them in. Flexion, knee flexion, hip flexion. And then reach to the sky, pulling your feet down, letting it lengthen through the hamstrings, working on the muscles in the front of the legs, down and release. In, up, down, release. In, up, down, release. Keep going, let's do 10 more.
and then release your legs over the block as you finish. And then right into foot circles, one foot only, 20 circles all the way around. Think of that clock. Hit all the numbers around the clock with your toes. Reverse. Point and flex. And then switch sides. 20 circles. Shoulders relaxing down. Gentle curve in your neck. And reverse. Point and flex. Okay, from here, arm glide. So bring your arms up. If this is just enough to have your arms here, you can have some options. You can move into goal posts and move your arms up and down into external rotation this way. If it feels easy to do that and your shoulder blades are scooched underneath you, you can take it into arm glide and bring them up over your head and then bring them back down. Gliding the arm up, letting the shoulder blade move with the arm, coming back down. If just hanging out in this position, if your arms aren't quite to the floor and you're just working this position and breathing into your belly and letting your arms come down to the floor, that's totally fine too. You're doing glides and that feels easy. Let's do five more. And then come on out of this. Come on to your hands and knees. And around and arch your back. All the way up. All the way down. Moving into a static extension position. So with your knees coming slightly forward or your hips coming slightly forward of your knees. And then go ahead and let your belly hang toward the floor. Let your shoulder blades squeeze together. Strong fingers. Then tuck your chin and let your head just hang. And just breathe into that.
adding proper curves to your spine, letting the shoulder move to the back of the shoulder socket. And gently come out of it. I mean, all the way up to standing. Hi. My cat is whining at me today. Okay, come back to standing. Go back to that short foot position. So one foot forward, one foot back with just a small space between your feet. Outer edge of the back foot pointed straight ahead and then bend deeply into your knees. Relax your shoulders completely. And then with the front foot, I want you to lift and lower your toes. So really bend down into that outer edge of that back foot. You have to look down super, super straight. Lift and lower your toes. Lift and lower. Bending deeply. Open shoulders. Lift and then press your toes down into the floor. Check your back foot, make sure it's still straight. Lift and lower. Lift and lower. And then come out of it, switch sides. Back foot, outer edge of the back foot, super straight, bending into that front foot. Even weight between your feet. And then lift your toes and press your toes down into the floor. Lift and press. First side again, one foot forward, one foot back, even weight between your feet. Outer edge of that back foot really straight. And then second side, second time. Even weight, back foot super straight. Lift your toes, press your toes back down. Accessing all the muscles that go underneath the foot, controls the arch, Acts as a brace if the, if the foot is pronating or supinating. Controls the movement of your toes. Myra, can you show that sideways? Uh-huh. Thank you. So just the toes are lifting. 
and then your your pelvis is going to be pulled forward over the top of your leg bones a little bit just because as soon as you bend the knees you pull on the muscles of the front of the leg and you ask the back to lengthen and that's going to roll the pelvis a little forward that has an effect going all the way up the back so we actually can do this exercise to change a shoulder position as much as anything else. Also working, obviously, the, the flexion of the ankles and the knees. Good. Uh, have a seat on your block or chair. Grab your strap. Place your strap, knees inside the strap, and then tighten it down. What is it? And then roll an arch into your low back so that you're moving the top of your femur, or you're moving the top of your pelvis over your femurs, and then pull out against that strap so that you're finding that outer hip. Press and release. Finding your hip flexors and then that lateral hip outer hip stabilizers, and you should feel it down in your butt. Press, release. Now press and hold, interlace your fingers, take your hands over, take it all the way up. Let your whole shoulders lift, everything come up, and then relax your shoulders down away from your ears. Keep pulling out on the strap. Feel those outer edges of your feet, of your hips get tired. Keep rolling and arching your back, keep relaxing your belly. Keep letting that go up. Now, if you can add your head, go ahead and look up. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Release it out. Go ahead and take that away. Come down onto your belly one more time. So we worked relaxing into flexion. We opened up your shoulders. Now I want you to move into a little bit of extension. So we're gonna go into a cobra. So coming down onto your belly. Hands by your rib cage and then lift your shoulders up and away from the floor. As you go up, gently pull your shoulder blades down your back and just go up to the place where your body feels okay. What kind of extension in your hips and your back can you handle today? Breathe, belly soft, glutes get to work a little bit as you pull up there, and then come on down. Again, shoulders lifting up and away from the floor, moving down your back, 
pressing up into your cobra. That may be a cobra that's right here. Just work some of those extensor muscles of your back. Maybe you get up to your hips. Glutes get to activate. Open that space and release it down. One more time. Shoulders lifting up and away from the floor. Curling, opening it up. And then back to your hands and knees. Find neutral. From there, take your leg and bring it out to the side into a fire hydrant. So stable hands, stable shoulders, stable rib cage. Then lift that knee out to the side, bring it back down. Let's do 10 of those. Lift and lower. Same leg, take it into a donkey kick, take it straight up and down. and switch sides into your fire hydrant first. 10 lifts out to the side. And then straight up. Donkey kick. And release. And then onto your back. One more glute exercise, feet on the floor, active bridges, lifting and lowering your hips off the floor. Let's do 20. Shoulders tucked underneath you, collarbones wide, arms out to the side. Lift your hips up and lower. Lift and lower. Excellent. Roll to your side. We'll do a couple balance exercises. You may want to use your chair or your block. And then scale. So one foot on the floor. This is a great exercise for supination and pronation. So find that. You're just going to go into your scale. Take it over, hip hinging, and then stand up. Control it all the way down, then all the way up. Over, and lift. Letting it all work like a pendulum. Over, and lift.
Switching sides. Over and up. Excellent. All right, back to standing. Arms up to the side. Balance this way now. Lateral lift of the leg. Hold it out there. Bring it back in. Standing, balancing. Heel as high as your toes going out. Do your best to get it as high as possible. Back in. Find that lateral hip, shorten and pull that leg out there. Find as straight as you can so the hip is doing that work. Get 10 done on one side and then switch 10 on the other. Feel as high as your toes. Good. First side one more time. Second side, second set. And then sit to stand. Sitting on your block or your chair. Feet can be in a little bit so that your ankles are in and your um, ankles are behind your knees just a little. Otherwise, if your ankles are out, it's pretty difficult to get up correctly. So bring those in a little. Hands behind your head. Open up your upper back. Hip hinge a little bit. Take it straight up. Sit to stand. 10 times, down and up. Take a quick break. Do one more set of those and then we'll move into our little meditation. Set it up, ankles back behind your knees. Work that ankle flexion that we found with our toes earlier. Hands behind your head, elbows pulling back, open up your upper back, lean forward, 
Feel your feet, use your feet, press up, find your butt muscles. Come on down, controlling it down, and lift it back up. When you've done 10, find either legs up over your chair or your block or legs out straight on the floor and just rest into your Shavasana. Taking a few moments again to let your whole body Settle. As you feel completely supported by the floor, feel the breath move in and out of your body, fully in, fully out. As you become aware of your breathing, let the rest of it Get more calm, more quiet. Allowing more space between the thoughts. Pay attention to your senses. How does the floor feel? What's the temperature of the air as it moves in and out of your body? How does it change as it moves between those two places? Where does it move in your body? Are there sounds around you? If a thought arises, notice it, witness it, and then let it go. Be aware if you're taken into the thought and step outside of the thought itself. Come back to your breathing. Come back to the sensations that exist inside your body.
And then go ahead and imagine that you are somewhere doing something that brings you great joy. And let that warm smile, positive vibration, just wash over you. And as you begin to have more awareness of what's happening in your body and coming back around to check in if you'd like, hold that positive vibration with you for maybe this whole day. Come back to it each time something else shows up and you feel a different kind of energy pulling on you, go back to that joyful, smiling, positive place. You're always welcome to turn off your computer or you can come back around and visit for a few minutes before we say goodbye. Hi, you are needy today. How'd that feel? How'd you do? You have to unmute yourself if you want to talk. It was so good, Kyra. Thank you. <laughs>